how do we distinguish mental illness derived desire to transform the body from legitimate desire to match to the body to perceived self image? Uh, it's tough. Well, it's not going to be a clean boundary. I mean, uh, I'm going to do an aside here because I think it's it. worthy. Mm-hmm. Think about how radical an intervention it is in human psychology to have mirrors. Right? In a world without mirrors, even a world in which, you know, yeah, there are ponds, but a pond only gives you such a good look, right? It's a, it's a, at best, it's still kind of, it doesn't hold still. It's not a perfect rendering, yep. right? So imagine living in a world in which your understanding of how you look is actually just simply a response to how people interact with you based on how you actually look, right? So you know, yep. I mean, it's not the same as growing up without a mirror, but I specifically wrote about this some actually in my first book from the experience of being on Nozimangabe, an island off the coast of Madagascar for many months at a time with no mirror. Right. And... um having gone to town for something and having discovered that I had some fungal thing. There were white spots creeping up my neck onto my face. And I asked my field assistant at the time, why didn't you tell me? He's like, what was I going to do about it? What were you going to do about it? <laughs> like, well, I, I don't know, but it's maybe it would have been nice to know. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, anyway. It was fascinating, fascinating to live um, without any ability to reflect on what it was that you looked like for months at a time. Right. But it's yeah. still not... It's not the same it's as having not, have a not thousand, having information. have yeah. never having yeah. seen yourself, right? Yeah. And early mirrors, remember, also weren't very good, right? right? Early mirrors were polished metal, which is not, you know not much better than the pond, mm-hmm. right? What actually kicks loose a mirror that gives you a photorealistic impression of what you look like is the ability to polish glass that you can get so smooth that when you silver it, what you get is an actual faithful rendering. Mm-hmm. So anyway, my point is. I actually think we'd be way the hell better off if we didn't have ourselves to gaze at in a oddly, you know, Alice in Wonderland reversed fashion Mm -hmm. and then to obsess over these things. If you were interdependent enough on your kin to tell you what you did need to know and to not tell you the stuff that you're probably better off not knowing and, you know, imagine... the temporary fixes that are possible. Are you going to want to... And, you know, but if... But if there's something you can't do anything about, like, do you need to know? You've got a, uh, a lemur on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but, it's quite a lemur on like, I mean, actually, let's just follow this through. Yeah. Okay. Imagine, you know you look like something because everybody else does. And you don't know what you look like. Okay? Wait, wait. I didn't understand that sentence. Everybody looks like... Everybody looks like a person. You look like some person that you'll never see. You can see all the others, but you can't see okay. you. You know you look like a person. Yeah. Okay. All right. So imagine that what you did was even not even consciously but you just modified the way you interacted so that the way people looked back at you was like they were gazing on somebody who was you know nice to interact with you modified your behavior so that other people's reflection of you uh hold on that that is a world in which what you are getting is something like an honest reflection because if people are repelled by you and want to turn away and not uh, continue to interact, that's a negative message. And then yeah. if you change something and people are more inclined to interact with you. So the point is... It encourages good behavior. It encourages inner beauty at some level mm-hmm. because it's not always the best looking people who are the most fun to you know talk to. Mm-hmm. In fact, often not, right? right. So, um, so the point is... The mirror and its ability to let you obsess about your own looks without any other feedback, it's sort of the opposite weird thing about what we say about the person at the front of the room uh, who is in a position to misinform you about reality, right? Mm. In this case, your your kin... Well, the mirror kind of let... The mirror allows you to focus only on the external indicators of beauty. On the superficial stuff, yeah. 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 This this is true, although that... It's going to be different for men and women. Sure. It's going to be quite different. And yes, um, truly, you know, staggeringly gorgeous men do have people just stop in their tracks and look at them. But that's a, it's a much rarer phenomenon. It's a much rarer than, phenomenon and they're gay. Not all of them. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's interesting 
actually, I, I've been reading, and this is from well into the age of mirrors, but I've been reading a bunch of fiction from uh, the late 19th and early 20th century of late. And the description of how females, how women look and of female beauty and such uh, st strikes me as dated, you know, strikes me as not, not the way that I would be describing such things now, of course, but it also seems to be a match for the kind of thing you're talking about where, you know, there, there are some individuals in these, in these novels uh, who just leave a trail of awe behind them, regardless of what, how they behave yeah. because they are that it's women because they are that stunningly gorgeous um, but almost everyone else, you know, has to work. You know, yes, you know, in, in this in this milieu, there's a lot of frippery and you know, and, and working hard to make the external look more like you're expected to look. Uh, but you also, there is also, aside from the very, very rare, truly extraordinarily gorgeous being, everyone is sort of vying for like, well, what else do I have? Like, what else right. am I bringing? And in you know, in the age of TikTok, for lack of a you know a better scapegoat here, uh, it is you know increasingly people not increase maybe not increasingly but it's really easy to just default to like well what enhancements can I put on the outside right right like artificially you know augmenting stuff rather than right. yeah I want to draw a distinction between um, beautiful and attractive mm -hmm. right beautiful is a commentary primarily on um, phenotype. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, I'm going to back that off. It is a commentary on uh, features. However, mm -hmm. there it is certainly true, I speak for myself, but I'm sure I speak for just about anybody who thinks about it. There is the person who, if you stop to think about it, is not beautiful, mm -hmm. but is very attractive. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it's even true that somebody who may have characteristics yeah. that you would think count against them beauty wise is very at home with themselves yeah, and totally. confident and funny or whatever. Yeah. And you think that's very, this person is attractive and it's almost like, yeah, they're just not superficial, right? Yeah. They actually have, they have depth. Yeah. And yeah, if you think, if you, if you look at a picture of them, perhaps you're like, oh, I mean, nose a little big, your eyes a little squinty, like, right. isn't quite, like, like, not beautiful. And this is quite different from the from the distinction between beautiful and hot, right? Um, that that we've made multiple times and 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 elsewhere here and here. But um, but yeah, you can't, you know. But so one of the things about modernity is the ever increasing number of ways that you can change your features, your actual features, right? Right. The, and, and, you know, this, this is quite analogous to the trans activist argument as opposed to the trans argument, like, you know, morphological freedom. Well, if I, if, if I want to, you know, have a penis formulated from the flesh of my arm, then I should be able to do that. No, actually, not sure you should be able to do that. Um, but if I want to uh, increase the cup size of my breasts by three sizes and uh, make my eyes bigger and add a horn out the back, then I should be able to do that because some people find that really attractive. Like, okay, I guess we have the technology, but you know, maybe develop a skill, right? Yeah, like, you yeah, know, but, maybe do something that's actually going to last and that will make you a more, you know, interesting, valuable, and frankly, happier as well. Happier and attractive. That's, yeah. that's really the thing <laughs> yeah. is the ability to obsess on your own features has not been a win. I mean, right. I, I have, uh, you know, I think mirrors are probably the worst invention we've ever had because of the psychological distortion. No, you don't. I'm not sure about, I'm not sure if I do or I don't. It's possible okay. I'm forgetting something. But I think the problem is we do have a kind of uh, uh, a hellscape of self-obsession. Yeah. And that is in part the result of the fact that you can sit and look in the mirror and imagine what could be better or whatever and not get on with your life and not learn that skill that makes you more attractive to people, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And so I think the thing is, we're never going to know mm -hmm. how much harm is downstream of the ability to just simply, I mean, I guess the point is you don't realize that it is a optical miracle 
to be able to walk up to something that looks like a window and see yourself as if you're equal distance the other side of a piece of glass. Yeah. That is a non-normal experience and it is psychologically uh, profound, which it, you can it actually... Is. And I mean, I, again, to go back to the many months that I spent uh, on Ozymangabe with no mirror and, you know, the, the next long field season that I was there, which is with you, having lived through this the first time, the first five month field season, I didn't take a mirror and I didn't tell you to. Yep. And, you know, we again, it was, I think, just four months that time, but, you know, just we're without mirrors now then we had each other and so you know if, if i had had yeah. a lemur or yeah, whatever you've got a leaf gecko on here. <laughs> yes i yeah. got the euro plate as glued to my head but um it was incredible it was incredibly freeing it's yeah. like yeah i'm i'm here to do research um it doesn't matter like it you know i, I can still smell myself i can still see the part like it's not about showing off in any way to anyone else that's yeah. not what we're doing here. And not ever running into a mirror by accident intentionally uh, was was amazing. And actually, I remember actually that after that first long field season when you weren't there with me, my parents were living in London at the time. And I went through London first and spent um, a week or so with them and walking past store windows and just catching my reflection constantly. I was like, how do people live like this? Right. This is insane. Like it, also all the people, like all the strangers, my mother will remember that I was kind of freaking out. Like I can't, I don't know how to deal with all of these people. And by the way, where are the geckos? <laughs> uh, but the constant catching your own reflection in store windows, I found particularly alarming. Yeah. I guess, after I mean, months without being able to see myself at all. I guess um, this, this, is, this is it is. Yeah. You don't understand how distorting this is. And, you know, it's yeah. distorting. Even, you know, you have the culture shock of you happen to not be with a mirror and then you return to civilization and even the reflections in the windows are jarring. Mm -hmm. um, and that's having grown up with mirrors everywhere. Right. 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 And the point is, you don't realize how profound an influence this is on everything that everybody's got these things. Yeah. Right. That everybody has multiple interactions with these things a day. Mm -hmm. Right. That. Uh, at the very least, you would want to ask the question, well, was that a win? Was that net <laughs> positive, right? Or did it yeah. have serious consequences for us yeah. um, that weren't so good? Totally.